Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? This is Tracy, and today I'm going to be doing a video that is a very interesting topic or debacle, I guess I will say, in the title. Um, and pretty much it's all talking about the card Chalice of the Void and this hypothetical situation that came up. And I'm pretty sure that Jerry Thompson came up with this hypothetical situation. And honestly, I think he just posted it and like. I don't really think he like expected that much out of it, but so many people responded and had very, very strong feelings on it. So I wanted to kind of talk about like, I, this is honestly a couple weeks old. So if you like were on Twitter, you like may remember this topic, or if you're not on Twitter, like you may have not even seen it at all, but I just kind of wanted to like talk about it in this video because I thought it was a really interesting topic of conversation. Okay. So pretty much what the hypothetical situation is, is, um, Basically, it's with the card Chalice of the Void, which is a pretty common card in modern. And um, the situation, so uh, this says that whenever a player casts a spell with converted mana cost equals to the number of charge counters on it, you counter that spell. So it's kind of an interesting card. And basically, the situation was like if your opponent is at one life and you gut shot them while Chalice of the Void is there, is that an okay thing to do or is that just being a jerk pretty much so the thing is about chalice of the void is it's kind of an interesting magic card because it's a permanent that stays in play and since it is it's popular but it's not like every deck is running it where a lot of times it very much is easy to forget about chalice of the void triggers now what I mean that by that is I don't just mean you yourself piloting it, I'm talking about the other person playing against it. Especially if they're a newer player or something, or again, it's just like if you're in a game and you're getting to the really late stages where you're on like turn 25 or something, you honestly may just forget oh man, I can't believe I just cast that spell, it just gets countered, that was really stupid. Now, sometimes people will um, cast cards that they knowingly will get countered so that they can go immediately to the graveyard for whatever reason they're trying to do. They don't want to, um, wh like whatever the, the, the point is pretty much. Um, so I totally understand people who aren't quite sure how Chalice of the Void works because a lot of people think that it means that it says like you can't play it and that's not true. What it says is it just counters it. So it goes on the stack and then it just gets countered, it just chills and goes to the graveyard. So again, in that situation, some people just like get confused with like the wording and like how that is phrased, but that's how the card works. And so again, it can be very easy to forget if you have the card, um, especially if it's coming in from a sideboard, it can just be like, oh wow, I can't believe I like cast this card, like I'm not allowed to do that. Or again, you are allowed to, it just gets countered pretty much. But this hypothetical situation says that if you have a gut shot with it, is that being a jerk? Now, a lot of people said, hey, so like the situation would be like, um, me, hi, I have Chalice of the Void out, you guys are my opponent, you're at one, and I cast gut shot, and I have Chalice. Now, a couple of ways to respond to this. First off, some people think this is totally fine to do. Some people say it it is their responsibility to know the cards and the triggers the way it works that if you do that in that type of situation you my opponent should just know oh i know how Charles of the void works like the, i'm not dead like that 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 card gets count like you can cast it but that card just gonna get countered so i guess the thing comes with intentionality are you casting the gut shot or whatever card are you trying to cast it through Charles of the void to to make your opponent scoop pretty much like are you doing that on purpose with that sort of clear intention in mind where you're doing it and you're trying to be like, hmm, are you paying attention to what my cards do? And I think it's a jerk thing to do. And the reason why is because if you know full well how Chalice of the Void works, the only time you should be casting a spell through it is if you want to go to the graveyard. Like if you're in that situation and you're like, oh, gotcha. Chalice of the Void trigger, it's get count it gets countered. If you're just gonna like play it and then just stare at your opponent, like, uh yeah, I'm gonna gut shot you and just be like, okay, cool. Are you are you not even smart enough, but are you like paying attention to the state of the board? And I feel like a lot of times what tends to happen is cards that just sit like that are, can easily be forgotten. So my view of it is if you know how Chalice of the Void works, you shouldn't be trying to I feel like cheat your opponent out. Like, I feel like you're, you're trying to like trick them or something. Like you're trying to be like, 
Are you paying attention to the state of the board? Oh, no, you're not. Well, yeah, sucks to suck. Well, you just lose because of that. And that's just like not okay. So um, there's this just, again, really blew up. And a lot of people said that that is not a jerk thing to do. I do because I just look at it where like you're you're not breaking the rules of magic, but I don't know, you kind of are in a way. I don't really know how to like fully explain it. I don't know if you guys are, um, if I'm making sense. Let me know if there's a way that you can phrase it that just like seems to make a little bit more sense. But if you know what a card does full well, like you know the rules behind the cards. And also too, like if you're playing in stages of competitive magic, like really high stages of competitive magic, like I'm sorry, but you really need to know what cards do. Like you just, you need to know how cards interact with each other. Now, it's not to say that there are situations that come up where you need to judge, but like you should know how Chalice of the Void works as a magic card. Like if you're, if you're playing in GPs and PPTQs, like you should just go into that, like knowing how a card like that works. This is not an off the wall magic card that you're like, whoa, Chouse of the Void, no one plays that card. Like, no, like this is a card that a lot of people play. So I think knowing how the interactions work is important. Now on the flip side of that scenario, so I was saying that I was the Chalice of the Void player and then you guys were my opponent. So coming from your perspective, um, I feel like a lot of people scoop prematurely in Magic. And I think they do that a lot with combo decks I've noticed. Like I think when people hit a point where they're like, oh my god, there's like no way I can win. Like, I only scoop, and I think I've said this, like, if I know there's nothing I could draw, or whatever I do doesn't matter. Like, I could cast all my spells and it just wouldn't do anything. That's when I know full well that I'm totally done on board. But if the situation looks bad and I have an out, I am always going to play that game out pretty much. So I think um, in that situation, I don't fault a player who sees through that Chalice of the Void, forgets that it's totally on the table, and does that. But, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but if I do cast a gut shot, am I supposed to first announce the Chalice of the Void trigger? Am I supposed to say gut shot, trigger Chalice of the Void? If you're a judge or you know the ruling, can you please let me know in the comments below really how that is logistically supposed to work? Or does your opponent have to respond to the gut shot or is it just triggered automatically through the chalice? I'm pretty sure it's triggered automatically through the chalice, which is why you should be announcing your triggers. Um, but I think maybe that runs into a whole separate situation of should you be announcing your, your triggers? Maybe, I, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily fault that person for scooping because it could be a situation. However, I think what happens to is people act too quickly and they don't think through their decisions. So like, if you see that, you're like, whoa, I'm totally dead without analyzing every aspect of the board. And that's a whole separate issue is that I think it's a lot about like spatial awareness and like being aware, okay, this is on the board and this is on the board and that's on the board and like, I have this trigger when this happens. So it's like keeping track of like all of the different types of things that are going on, I think is really important. And I think a lot of times, again, cards that haven't been relevant in 10 turns, you just like totally forget about them. I'm like, I feel like I'm so guilty of knowing what this feels like because I play EDH. And like, that is like the spot where it seems to happen most where someone has a card that's like not relevant until like 20 turns later. And you're like, whoa, I totally forgot about that card. So. Um, anyways, I would really love to know your opinions on this. I'd really like to basically just know, do you guys think that this is like a jerk thing to do or not? Do you think that this is a totally acceptable um, thing to do? Why or why not? And yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.